the acid burns a hole in the glove, although she flushed her hand in the sink for 15 minutes to remove the acid, she received a second degree burn. The lesson that can we, uh, we can learn from this story is there are different type of gloves. She, she was wearing a gloves, but with a type latex that the acid melting the latex material or uh, gloves. So we can notice that the right uh, size, the uh, uh, hand size uh, matters, how comfortable the gloves is, and we will see in the next slide. So protecting your body is a major uh, rule in our laboratory. We, we talk a lot about wearing lab coat, uh, goggles, gloves, mask, also try to wear, uh, 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 remove or avoid any accessories or uh, contact lenses that may cause a hazard or a, a highly risk a potential in the lab. So we will uh, review the appropriate clothing in the lab and what to avoid in contact with our skin. We will start first by wearing a lab coat or any clothing that could cover the skin to provide some limited ability for chemical to come in contact with the skin, such as long sleeves is better than short sleeves. Long pants instead of short or a skirt are better. So the 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 high the more that that you can cover um, your skin in appropriate way, it is better than uh, wearing a t-shirt or a short skirt or a short sleeves and so on. Second, about shoes, of course you have. Uh, the knowledge that, that what the uh, instruction about the shoes, what it should be. Uh, complete cover the feet. Mumtaz and complete cover the feet. Open toes shoes are uh, prohibited in our lab. So why? Because if you smell a chemical, it may be in contact with your feet and this is hazard or uh, danger. Next, we will talk about handling a glassware. Our hand is the, is the perfect tools that we are using while we will do experiment or mixing things together, solution, anything. Our hand is the, is, is the rule of doing all of that. So uh, one of the risks that may, uh, or incident, most common incident that we will face with our hands is handling glassware, such as pipette, beakers, flask. We must face uh, injuries, cutting, cuts, it's all by handling a glassware in an inappropriate way. So to provide these cuts or injury in the hand, first you have to be uh, aware that this type of incident might be happened in the lab. This is one by have the recognize, recognized this type of incident. Number two, dispose of used or broken glassware probably. Any broken glassware, just disposal this type of glassware 
in the uh, glassware container. You will notice that in the lab, there is paper container, uh, a waste, basket waste, also glassware container. So make sure that any broken glassware, immediately you should dispose this glassware. There are many types of protective gloves using in the lab, many styles of gloves, also a different kind of gloves are available in the lab. It depends on the degree of protection that these gloves can provide. We can see in this picture a different type of gloves, Playfix, market style, latex, nitrate, many types and each type of gloves has its own purpose. The main feature of the gloves are the size, thickness, cuff length, material from which they are made or the made uh, material of this type of gloves. This is the main feature of any type of uh, gloves that we must be noticed before we are wearing this type of gloves. So it will provide um, a protection for our hand. Any uh, contact will be uh, limited. So any cuts or injury will be limited in our uh, lab or our time in the lab. How to remove lab gloves is also matters. We can see from this picture, one, two, three, four, five, six, how can we remove safely the gloves that we are using all uh, the two hours or the three hours in the lab? How can we remove the lab gloves? We're removing the first glove, turn it inside out, if we can see, so that contamination becomes wrapped up inside the gloves. And hold the inverted glove in the palm of the other hand. We're removing the second uh, glove, turn this inside out as well and pull it over the first glove. So you hold the first glove with your second glove and remove the second glove carefully and slowly so you can you limit to be in contact with the contaminate in this glove it's also matter the size of the gloves if it if the gloves are too small or too big will uh, limit your moving or your ability to do the procedure in this in any experiment. Also, the gloves that are too thick or too loose, a safety. The hazard. Yes. One hundred percent of the time may in fact make you less what safe rather than safer from suboperation. Make sure to select the right glove for the task, since not all gloves protect against all chemicals. So we back again to the types of gloves. Make sure that the types of gloves is correct with your chemicals or solution that you are dealing with. It's important to always consider the hazard of the chemicals you are using, so you can choose the type of gloves that it is perfect for this chemical. Chemicals that should be handled also with the gloves and other equipment that called tongs and forceps. We can see the tongs here. 
which is the tube handles. You are using that in the lab, right? So tongue clamp forceps using, used in the laboratory use the right tool for the job, the beaker tongues with the rubber coating are good for hot beakers. So we can move the hot beaker from the hot plate by the beaker tongues. Also make sure these tongues don't be used since this will melt the rubber. The hot crystals could melt the rubber from these tongues. For again, and you must know the equipment and the chemicals that you are using to, to choose the right apparatus or uh, equipment for this experiment. So in the hot materials or hot beaker, what should we use? The gloves or the tools? The tools. Okay, I'm going to say tools. Abir. Okay. In hot materials, gloves or tools? Uh, uh, tongues will, uh, forceps or the gloves to remove a hot beaker, for example? Tools. Okay, so who can read? The gloves or tools, and we can decide. Anna? Yes, Sahar. There are special gloves with excellent insulation that are available in most research labs. These are quite expensive and not generally labs. And the thin gloves discussed won't provide any more protection. Yes, uh, the gloves that are provide a thermal protection. And maybe you are experienced that if you wear the, the original gloves in our lab and uh, remove or touch the beaker, the hot beaker, you will notice that there is still a thermal connection. There are specific gloves that are uh, maybe you are using this type of gloves in your kitchen that make uh, a thermal protection. It's a different type than the uh, gloves that provided in our introductory lab. So the thermal uh, protection, Mumtaz, it's it good. It can't be provided by the introductory uh, gloves uh, in the lab. Continue, Sahar. What's about handling a hot object? The best way is... To handle hot objects, it is best to use beaker tongues and forceps. These are not uh, interchangeable tools. Beaker tongues are appropriate for small to medium-sized beakers and usually have a rubber coating on the tips to provide good grip. But they are not good for the small necks of uh, Erlenmeyer flasks are the small diameters of test tubes. For these pieces of glassware, you should use forceps that are able to safely hold objects of a smaller diameter. Yes, thank you, Sahar. So again, also choosing the tongues or forceps depends on the tools that we are moving or using in the hot plate. We notice that the flask and the small diameter test tube can't be uh, removing by the beaker tongues. It has a test tube and the flask. So it's all about recognize and to be aware of each tool, uh, each uh, type of gloves, so you can uh, apply your procedure in a more safely way. So we recognize the lab situation. 
that we are using our hand and uh, in contact with our skin that could be exposed to chemicals or hot objects. We assess the level of risk for exposure based on the lab procedure. We can minimize the risk by using a probably nitrile gloves, this type of gloves that be provided in our lab, introductory lab, or to use the tools to handle a hot object. We prepare ourselves for the emergency by knowing the correct emergency response procedure. Next part, let's talk about the fume hood or a chemical hood in introductory laboratory. Don't let chemicals take your breath away. Many liquids that you used in the lab and some solids also will produce or generate gases, chemical substances in the gas base. And most chemical has discernible odor. The only useful swiping generally about the safety of breathing chemicals is that many are not safe to breathe. So any gases, chemical gases in your experiment is not safe to breathe, but we are still uh, has the potential to breathe this type of chemical or gases. We wise, we wish to keep noxious gases out of the lab air that we are breathing, and we can do this by using a chemical hot in the laboratory. Chemical host was required by a federal regulation to make sure that the air in the lab is safe to breathe, since the only really effective way to meet this is by performance standard that required to use a chemical host in our lab. Chemical host historically changed the phrase to what? Fume hot. Fume hot is the very common phrase that we are still using today, and it's really a common phrase. And technically, it's all about fumes. The objective or the goal from this chemical hot or the fume hot is to remove the fume or the gases that are two small solid particles from the lab air. So this type of fume also contain aerosol, dust, and the small particles that may generated by experiment in the lab. So how does the fume hood work? We can see this is the front side of the fume hood this big windows and, and this. there are bottom, uh, both sides, side, and this is the side corner of the film hut. We can see the uh, details of the structure of the film hut. What you can see, Buffels, top airfoil, sash, side airfoil. It's all about air and how can we remove the contaminated air that generated by the chemicals in the fume hood by this fume hood. Laboratory hood with a vertical sash. Sashes should also be closed. This is the most uh, safest way to use the chemical hood that this sash or this غطاء المتحرك must be closed. Expect when arms and hand need to be accessing something inside the chemical hood to do your procedure in the experiment. 
but it should be at minimum uh, this sash close to half. Just make sure that there are space for your arms to be uh, entered in this chemical hood. Laboratory hood with horizontal sash, we can see it's horizontal, بشكل أفقي, sashes أو الغطاء المتحرك. These hoods are less frequently used. We can see this familiar in our uh, lab, right? We all have this vertical sash. It can offer similar protection as the vertical, but they are not removed and the openings are kept to minimize size during operation and used. So the opening for this sashes are kept to minimize size. دائماً تكون مغلقة إلى أقصى حد لضمان what is safety while we applying our procedure. How do you use a chemical hood safely? Many operations in your experiment must be taken in the fume hood, especially with the concentrated acid and base. In some uh, laboratories, we use the fume hood 100% of the time. Even when 100% of the procedure do not need to be in hood, it's safe to mix things in fume hood. Why? Because how it's work answer the reason why it's better to use the chemical hood uh, all the time. It's all about air flow. El, 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 how does a chemical hood work? It's to take the air by the fan placed in this uh, chemical hood. Before using a chemical hood, the most important step is to check to make sure that the exhaust fan is on by checking the bottoms. If you can see, there are bottoms uh, for on and off this chemical hood. فبتشغيل اللي فيه ذات الفان أو المراوح ومخارج الهواء ومنافذها الموجودة في الفيوم هود is working. So this, this is number one. Check that the fan is on. Second, before placing any chemical inside the chemical hood, you may need to build your apertus. It is at this point that the sash stop may need to be overridden in order to get adequate access to the hood. Relowering the sash will re-engage what the stop once chemicals are introducing to the chemical hood. The sash should not be raised as we said, this uh, الساش أو هذا الغطاء المتحرك في الفيوم هود على الأقل يكون half way closed or above the stop or the arms that are entering the fume hood. Hood effectiveness كيف تكون فعالية this chemical hood أو متى نقول this chemical hood is effective is when the ability to capture and contain an airborne chemical within its boundaries. When this hood has the ability to capture and contain the air contaminate with its boundaries, this is uh, an effective chemical hood. There are three factors also influence the hood performance. First, the enterer of the hood need to be sufficiently uncluttered. El enterer or ma bidakhil fium hood, if we can 
return to the picture, this bench or this table, the enterer of the chemical hood must be what? Cluttered. Uh, organized. The chemical and bottles must be organized. The chemical and up. يعني حتى لو كانت فيوم هود ووظيفتها سحب الهواء أو الاير فلو وتنقية الهواء الأبخرة الصاعدة من الكيميكالز it must be organized لأن في حال كانت غير منظمة والأدوات uh, while you are using the bottles uh, you not return the bottles to the same place بيأثر على السيفتي حتى لو كان البوتلز بداخل الفيوم هود ف the first thing the interior of the hood need to be sufficiently uncluttered or organized so that air flow is not embedded from the front to the exhaust area at the bottom rear of the hood how it's work it's get the air The contaminant air, the هواء الملوث, will enter the fume hood and be uh, removing by the fan and the exhaust air flow to the outside the building. So when we have cluttered bottle or uh, non-organized enterer, what will happen? The air flow embedded أو بيكون يواجه عوائق الخروج الهواء من الفيوم هود. Second, it's fairly easy to distribute the air at the face of the hood in ways to compromise the 100 feet minute flow rate. Here we'll talk about the flow rate with minutes and feet, but the most important thing is the uh, apertures with glassware على الأقل لازم تكون one inch apart of your uh, enterer يعني بداية uh, applying the bottles ووضعها على الانترر لازم يكون على الأقل one inch away from the side oh two inch so it's two inch Any apertures inside the hood should be placed on two-inch blocks to allow better air flow. Whenever your hands and arms do not use need to be inside the hood, the sash what should be closed completely. So even when you applying the procedure in the fume hood, once you finish, close the sash completely. So this will optimize the contaminate and removal of the air and gases inside. So the sash provide a useful shell that will better contain an explosion or fire. So if we, uh, uh, I will move to uh, another slide. Slide one and two, it's all about chemical hood. This cannot fill part three, Fabantakali. This slide again, we are still in the chemical hood. We will talk about the kind of chemical hood. There are many variations to the main theme of chemical hood. Terkeep, our associate, the Limonju, Lazm Tkun Mojuda, of any kind. Or any type of chemical hood. First, a movable front face shield or sash. This is first. Lazim ikun fi this removable shield or sash. Hada al gita al mutaharik, sawa kan vertically or horizontal. A workspace inside. 
الانترر او this workspace inside a small cup sinks in the rear of the cabinet لازم يكون في sink بداخل this workspace وتلاحظونه موجود باللاب للتخلص من ال ال hazardous chemical or concentrated in the same fume hood. In the front of the hood, there are switches for the light and also buttons for the fan to turn off or on. A rear wall with adjustable ventilation slot buffers a low exhaust at low, medium, and high point in the hood. Also, في منافذ للهواء تكون موجودة على جانبي ال الفيوم هود. Side panel that may be fitted with vacuum, air, gas, and water. A smooth, a smooth air foil across the front face of the hood floor that allows the air to be drawn in from outside the hood. Also, air foils or منافذ للتهوية on the two sides. To provide for smooth flow of air. تلاحظون منافذ التهوية أو ال air foils موجودة at the side of the fume hood, at the front, at the upside, because it's all about air flow. It's all about how can we take off this contaminated air, هذا الهواء الملوث, to outside the lab or outside the building. Also, a front opening that can be Varied in size by moving the sash to a desired position. This sash must be uh, has adjustable removal. يعني أقدر أحرك هذا الغطاء المتحرك uh, upward or downward based on your procedure. So this is the main future of any type of chemical hood, and we can see there are many types in this picture. We can see how it work. The fume hood in this picture, the airflow in the laboratory will be compromised by the materials in the hood. So poor airflow or rapid air movement that can allow the interior atmosphere to flow back into the laboratory. So when you have cluttered. Uh, workspace or rapid air movement uh, can the sash not close enough to adjust your arms inside it will all affect what the airflow and the air flow will flow back into the lab and this is the hazard we want all the gases or hazardous gases to be exhaust أو يتم سحبها إلا خارج إلا بواسطة البافلز الفان والأير فويلز أو منافذ الهواء So it's very important to understand the function of the various part of the chemical hoods Why to use the chemical hood effectively يعني الآن لما عرفت الدايناميك of air flow وهدف لفيوم هود أعتقد لما تروحون اللاب يوم الثلاثاء أو الخميس تكون نظرتكم للفيوم هود مختلفة الساش مثلا بيكون closed halfway until your arms تتأكدون أن الفيوم هود opened by the bottoms uh, organized workspace inside Why? Because you understand the uh, effectiveness of this chemical hood or the purpose of it in to uh, take off all the air, contaminated air, تحديداً, to outside the lab or the building by the air exhaust. Also, there are vanometer used in this chemical hood to measure the airflow in the laboratory hood. These inexpensive devices can give a reasonable indication 
of air flow under a particular set of circumstances. فالفانوميتر يقيس الاير فلو او معدل جريان الهواء ممكن يكون as indicator في حال كان المعدل اقل مثلا نعرف ان الفيوم هود must be check in او تتغير او يتم اصلاحها. كلير؟ اي واضح. Finally, in the chemical hood uh, part, we'll talk about specific uh, type of chemical hood, two special type, perichloric acid hood and radioactive materials hood. يعني بخلاف كل الأنواع السابقة واللي نشوفها سيميلر ومتشابهة باختلاف التصميم لكن الكونسبت واحد أو التركيب واحد بوجود منافذ التهوية وهدف العمل وهاو اتس وورك في تو تايب من الكيميكال هودز مختلفين تماما وسبيشال لكيميكال سبستانسز محددين أو تايبس أوف ماتيريالز سبيسيفيك which is our two types. The pyrochloric acid has a special hood for the pyrochloric acid, and the radioactive materials or the radioactive materials or substances that can be radioactive or radioactive, like the uranium, for example. So also, the fume hood or chemical hood is a special hood. If we can see the pyrochloric acid fume hood, why the perichloric acid has its own chemical hood? Because it's extremely reactive, reactive more than sulfuric acid, super reactive. Also can produce explosive perichlorate with metals that are touch or shock sensitive. This perichloric acid produced perichlorate وهذه البيلكلوريت نوع هذه المادة التي تنتج من this acid is uh, produced with metals and both are shock sensitive or can make explosion or fire immediately by being in touch with water or a certain uh, chemicals. So that's why this perichloric acid in the industry or in medical facilities has its own chemical hood to uh, apply the uh, experiment or any type of procedure that contain a perichloric acid in this type of hood. These hoods are normally fitted with equipment for washing down the interior of the hood exhaust system after perichloric acid use to prevent the buildup of explosive perichlorate residues. Even this chemical hood musamma to washing down the interior of the hood. فتعمل على ال clean up ال ال التلقائي automatically clean up washing up the the work space inside. Why to eliminate any uh, explosive perichlorate uh, residues or بقاء أي من uh, بقايا من هذه البيروكلوريت الناتجة اللي ذكرنا it's explosive أو ممكن تكون متفجرة بأني touch للwater أو للheat. So the entire exhaust system must be independent of the other exhaust system connected to other chemical hood. So this normal chemical hood automatically and immediately cleans the interior space, and also the exhaust system is independent to do it immediately to get rid of all the remaining perichloric acid. Anyone who's using a perichloric acid should seek special training in this in this one operation. فطريقة استخدام الفيوم هود must be 
uh, trained by uh, professional personnel to work with this fume hunt. So this is about the chemical hood, how it's work, the kind and types. Last part, we will talk about the lab room itself. The last learning objective, it's all about the mate and the ventilation or the في in workspace in the lab. It's unlikely that you will find yourself working in the lab without condition conditioned air or uh, without airflow in the lab. Of course, you notice that there are fans in the lab also. It's 24-7 uh, conditioned air called the conditioned air in the lab. Why? Because it's important to turn over rate or air exchange rate in the lab. The air in the lab is replaced and must be uh, complete uh, exchange the air flow in the lab. فلازم يكون في حركة ولازم يكون في تهوية للهواء في اللاب واللاحظ هذا من خلال ال ال fan, the condition air, the twenty four seven, the the fume hood, the open uh, doors. It's all matters to complete the mixing the air and the ability to the air to mix in the room will be uh, uh, applied or provided by this uh, standard. فدائماً the doors لازم تكون open. لأن في حال كانت closed the fan أو تهوية the air flow بيكون أقل. لازم يكون في حركة أو air flow fast flowing. In the uh, laboratory, and we can notice that in order to keep any airborne lab contaminate inside lab, we have the HVAC system containing building are ideally designed to keep the pressure in the lab slightly lower than the pressure outside the lab. Most HVAC system. Is non-laboratory building enjoy the advantage of being able to recirculate the interior air of building? For وجود ال HVAC system بيساعد على ال recirculate أو تدوير ال الهواء in the lab, since the lab air must always be considered contaminated. دائما we recognize or be aware that هواء اللاب بيكون إيش ملوث or contaminate. So it's not recycled and the exhaust vent usually lead to roof vent to fresh air must be constantly drawn from outside the building to the laboratory. فدائما ال 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 air in the lab ملوث ونحرص على الاير اكزوست او خروج هذا الهواء من منافذ التهويه الى خارج البلدنج تو هاف ا كونتينوس وات فريش اير فروم ذا اوت سايد ذا بلدنج فهي عمليه تدوير لتهويه اللاب اند وي كان سي ذير ار لابراتوري فنتيليشن سنوركل نشوف أنابيب الـ الـ ventilation أو التهوية ممكن شاهدتوها باللاب أو in the uh, at the end of the lab or the preparation room we can see this ventilation snorkel this snorkel can be used in limited situation when a spot ventilation is required but they do not effectively Remove all air contaminate from particular location. If it's used only in the spot or in the location that is present in this snorkel, it's not effective to remove all air. Just the spot or particular location. 
So there are many factors that can remove the air, contaminate air, such as the fan, the conditioned air, the open doors, the fume hood. Second uh, equipment, it's the glove box. The glove box is used in the chemistry laboratory for the protection of chemicals than lab personnel. Chemicals that are air or water sensitive can be used in the closed environment. For example, in nitrogen or the argon that would usually be used in the interior atmosphere, it could be sensitive to water. So we are using or handling this chemical or transfer materials in the glove box without allowing the laboratory atmosphere to enter the interior of the glove box. This type of chemicals that are sensitive to air or water in this glove box. حتى عملية الموفينج أو نقل هذه المواد يتم بواسطة الجلاف بوكس. كلير؟ yes yes. so finally we will review our rub principle. we recognize when the use of particle chemicals uh, may produce airborne contaminants in the lab. We recognize that chemical hot should be uh, should not be used for storing chemicals. It must be organized, only contain a um, hazardous chemical. We assess the level of risk based of on F1, the possibility of exposure. Uh, that's why we are using a fume hood or airflow to at a lab to to limit the risk of uh, many types of chemicals. We minimize the risk by working in a chemical hood, also following the procedure that prevent contaminate air escaping um, escaping often through the face, usually devices other than chemical hood and personal protective equipment are not appropriate protection, we should use a chemical hood. Finally, we prepare ourselves for the emergency of contaminated air and planning in advance what to do if that happens to uh, knowing the exit door, to always make the door open, uh, check the fume hood is on or off, and all this um, all this procedure. So thank you for your attention. And today we talk about, about three main parts. First, we talk about the gloves, how it works, uh, the benefit of the gloves, the types, and the major tools in the lab. Second, we will talk about a chemical hood, the types, how it's work, and the special kind of chemical hood for a special chemical hazardous chemical. Finally, we talk about the lab room itself and how it's important to have the airflow um, or turnover rate of the airflow to make this environment safe as possible as we can. Any question? تفضلوا الآن انتهى محتوى lecture وشكرا لحسن استماعكم. You're welcome.